This week <laughs> on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast, we have a, a very experienced and celebrated truck driver for the interview, Teresa DeSantis, a driver with more than 40 years experience. You got to hang out with us this week. Welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Teresa, a truck driver of more than 40 years experience. Wow. Teresa. Start off by yes. doing a short introduction of yourself, perhaps the type of truck you drive, the type of freight you haul, and the state that you call home. Uh, Teresa DeSantis, known as The Witch. I drive The Witch's Inn truck. It's a 1985 Peterbilt 359, 285-inch wheelbase, red and orange calendar truck back in 85. Um, I pull a flatbed Conestoga. It's an east spread axle, 49 and a half feet. And I haul um, machinery, steel, whatever will fit, it ships. Cool. What the hell? We, you know, and congrats. I believe you are our first female truck driver on the podcast oh. as well. Yes, I'll take that. I believe that's true. Yes. We've had lots nice. of females, but in different roles. Yes. Yes. Johnny, well, you, you must cool. have, because I don't know what the heck a Peter, I mean, I know what a Peterbilt is, but I don't know all the different trucks and everything. <laughs> Do you want to ask Teresa a couple of questions about her, well, especially 1985 part? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, all pre-emissions, pre-this, pre-that. So, you know, no ELDs, <laughs> you know, say, no ELDs. Do paper logs. So, yeah. You know what? And, and it's funny because that's back from my era. I had I had some old, I had an 83 Freightliner, uh, an 82 <laughs> Ford Cab over. So those are when trucks were trucks. There's no doubt about that. So, yeah. So, so let me ask you this, Teresa. Is this your mm -hmm. truck or is this a company truck? No, this is my truck. My husband and I bought it. We had a cab over Kenworth when we started and we traded that in for this truck. So we teamed it. I got my license in 84 and we teamed this truck until 87. And then he gave it to me. And that's the only truck I know how to drive. I know the sound of it. I know yep. the same stuff goes wrong with it. it that's part of me. Yeah. How many miles have you got on this old girl? You know, I keep saying three and a half million. I've been saying that for five years now. I do have, <laughs> I do have records of all the maintenance. Yeah. So I should just go back and add up the miles. Um, right. I'm still saying three and a half million. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was going to say it won't, it won't tell you three and a half million on that odometer. It's a, there's a, a digit or two that's going to be missing. So, but awesome. What, what, what kind of motor have you got in this thing in driveline? I got a, um, 3406. It's, um, an industrial engine. So it's kind of like oh. a, a C instead yep. of a B. Right. Um, I got two, uh, no, three twenty five rears and an 18 speed. 18 speed. Is that Caterpillar white or yellow? My first one was white and we yep. could not have, this one's orange. I paint it orange okay. to match okay. the oh, stripes cool. on the back. So it's Sweet. orange and black. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think the most impressive thing here, and our, our, our audience needs to realize this, in today's day and age, here we got a young lady that's been driving this truck for quite a while, and it's got 18 gears in that thing. You know, there's a lot of newcomers coming into this industry that, you know, they panic. They see a stick sticking out of the floor, not sure what to do with this thing. And they got three pedals and go, what the heck do I do with those? Yep. Well, and that's, sorry to say, but that's what's ruining the industry because they don't realize what they're hauling, like mm -hmm. what it takes to actually stop a truck and pay attention instead mm -hmm. of just mm -hmm. being drive and go. I mean, yeah. we got to sit there and think about what gear we want and yes. how fast we're going. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of thought process in place now. And climbing the mountains and everything else. It, yeah. 18 gears is a lot. I mean, yeah. I know, Johnny, you can drive a standard. I can drive a standard. Yeah. I think the largest I ever got to was a 13 speed. Um, I don't recall ever doing 18. Oh, they're not much different. 
<laughs> you can do if you if you can do ten, you can do them all. <laughs> Just changes the shift pattern a little bit. So you know, I, I at one time I had an eight double L, you know, and that had a had a, uh, a U shaped shift pattern, not an eight shift pattern, which was a little bit different. But yeah, so 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 tell us, Chasa, what got you into the trucking industry back long time ago? Well. I was dating my husband back in the early 80s, late 70s, and his family actually did trucking. His brother did trucking. So one day he said, hey, you want to go for a ride to New Jersey? And I'm like, New Jersey? Really? I said, yeah, because my family and I, we went to the Cape for vacation or Maine. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go to New Jersey. So I went with him and I just fell in love with trucking. And my husband did it. So I'm like, I guess I'm signing up. And he said, okay, you're going for your license. And that was back in 84. And I, I passed, believe it or not, it took me a couple of tries, but I did pass and I wasn't very good at it. So I sat by my husband from 84 till 87, learning yep. how to drive. Wow. And you'd mentioned you were doing running team there for a little bit. So in that a, yeah. or the capital that was yeah. a three-year apprenticeship program you said you signed by your husband years. yeah yeah i needed three years <laughs> yeah wowzers good deal so yeah. and, and still in it today here we are 40 years later and you're still mm -hmm. in it today i just i mean I'm, i can't wait to go out in two weeks and yeah. go sit behind the wheel and just it's my peace Right. If I'm, if I'm home, I'm either working on it or working in the house or yard work or something. At yep. least when I'm in the truck after I'm loaded, I'm just relaxing. Right, right. Well, you had mentioned you just spent uh, several hours polishing the truck. Yes, the truck, <clears throat> this truck gets taken apart. Um, the wheels off, everything up on jack stands. We look at everything. We clean, I clean everything and then the trailer's up on jack stands right now and i'm polishing it and cleaning everything wow labor of love yes <laughs> well that's well that's that's how we find out if something's wrong i mean yep. two years three years ago we took the steer tires and polished and i found a spider crack in one of them oh, so wow. we new steer tires and i'm like yep. I just happened to look and said, Hey, what's, what's this crack? I don't, I don't remember marking my wheel. And my husband's like, that's a cracked wheel. Go order some yep. new ones. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And how many drivers do that type of thorough inspection, Johnny? <laughs> I can count them on one hand. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Teresa not only knows how to drive it and inspect it, and spot the errors and yep. the defects. Like, yep. damn, where's the truck driver? Now there are some. I'm sure there's other yep. uh, drivers out I'm there sure. that can do it. Yep. But yep. Not enough of them. Is, no. Is my no. Point. Exactly. No. Exactly. We. Well, you said you'd mentioned earlier you're based out of the Arizona area where you like to spend the winter, so you're not having to do much traveling and uh, enjoy life. Um, Hauling steel on that Conestoga and machinery and whatnot. What are what are some of the lanes or areas that you prefer to run or or don't run? I don't like. Well, California don't like me, um, yeah. or my truck. Yeah. Um, and I don't like the Northwest because it's it's all hills. Right. Um, I kind of baby my truck, and then I usually I leave here in May. And I stay northeast and down to Florida and Texas and up to Minnesota usually. Okay. I just run that, that central yeah. area. How long are you usually gone for a, a, at a time or a stretch? Um, I usually leave May and don't come home until November, the end of November. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So you'll stay out and just keep trucking and not come back home very often. Yeah, well, I got family up in Massachusetts. So if I go up there, I stay oh, with okay. family yep. and visit and everything. Okay. And I mean, I one of my toolboxes on the trailer 
is actually all my clothing for oh yep cool cleaning yep. there's, there's not yeah. enough room it's still happily it's still happily married i take it um yeah yep 40 years and this is and, and this is how you have a happy marriage is you disappear for nine months. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So so when you come back you can tolerate him again. <laughs> yes. you can tolerate me. Yeah. <laughs> is your husband still driving then? Um he just sold his truck this okay. year. Um yeah. and he's selling his trailer. He did it and he went sideways with some stuff and tried going to another company didn't like it. So he finally said, I'm not doing it anymore. Cause he, he did work in the office. He taught me how okay. to drive. Sure. And in 93, we sold our company mm -hmm. and we both went in the office for a couple of years. I, right. I'm not an office person. I don't have that many patients. So I went back to driving and he stayed in the office till 2017 i think okay. he finally retired yep cool there is. cool and retirement's not calling your name yet not yet no i i don't know what i'm gonna do he he likes playing golf he has a relationship with his old employer so they keep him busy cool. i don't know i don't know what i i do yep yeah, well uh, the ball I was going to say the bonus part is now you can take him for a ride once in a while. Yeah. Well, and we went together, speaking of together, we went together <laughs> in his truck. Um, my, my trailer was getting worked on. So I, I jumped in his, it was a big sleeper. I yep. mean, it was got the kitchen sink, the whole, the whole nine yards. And his is a, his was a pack car. So it's okay. very quiet. I mean, yep. I didn't, mine's very loud. I mean, I shift <laughs> by the sound. I don't, I, I need sound to shift. And yep. I'm like sitting there and he's like, you got to shift. And I said, I can't hear anything. He's got to, yep. you got to look at the tack. <laughs> I, said, well, I don't like your truck. I said, I don't drive like that. So eventually I got used to it, but he was in for an awakening. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we, we should let the, let, let the audience know, cause I think this is cute. Um, that your pat, your Peterbilt is a, uh, a flat top sleeper, but it's known as a stand up for you. It is. Cause I'm four eleven, four eleven and a half, whatever. And I can stand up in that sleeper or in the cab. It doesn't matter. Perfect. It's you can fine. you can literally jump on the bed and not hit your head. Well, I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, oh, gosh. I'm impressed as hell that you leave in May and don't come home till November. That was yeah. always way too much on the road for me. How do you manage it? Just as long as I'm busy, I'm okay. I, yeah. I'm not good at sitting still more than a day. Mm -hmm. um, I clean my truck with a five gallon bucket of water, mm -hmm. um, do my laundry and that takes about a day and I, I gotta go. I mean, unless I'm with family or friends that can keep me occupied, I go stir crazy. Sure, sure. Cool. Uh, and have you had any challenges being a female driver over the last 40 years? Um, it's gotten better for us as for truck stops and showers and stuff like that on the, mm -hmm. <laughs> on the well, North, in the Northeast, you didn't get that. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? It was the Northeast. That was the worst section. And it still is. It actually is. It's, not a lot of truck stops, not a lot of parking. Um, thank God I have a place up in Mass that I can park because there's there's no room. Nobody mm -hmm. wants you. They don't make arrangements for anything. Mm -hmm. Well, and just the, the challenges of a female in what is 
was at least predominantly a male industry. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I got to think you've had a few, a few uh, things that you went, these idiots that I'm with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it still happens to this day, but um, a lot of stuff like backing into places when you show up at a customer, I've even had my truck out in the parking lot at a steel mill. And I was in there with all the other drivers sitting there waiting. And one of the guys, cause I, it's the witches in has a yeah. broom on it. And he comes over to all the drivers. He didn't know who was driving the truck. Um, and he said, which one of you are going to teach me how to drive a broom? And I stood up and said, that would be me. And he, he, he didn't know what to say. <laughs> so he just said, okay, um, door seven, could you back in? <laughs> Change his tune quick. <laughs> but yeah, backing up and, and being a petite woman and showing up is can be challenging. Not, for, mm -hmm. not that I can't do it, but mm -hmm. they treat they you differently. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and, you know, yes. That, that's all I can say to that. I mean, uh, yes. I, well, they... I was going to say, I was going to say, I bet you gain a lot of respect, though, from your fellow drivers, you know, when they see you roll in in that old 85 Peterbilt, you know, with an 18-speed and put that thing right where it needs to go. You know, I'm sure those boys are standing there with their eyes bulging out of their head going, did you just see that? Holy wow. You know, that's well, huge respect for your, your, your peers. And, and I tell everybody, I'd rather, this is crazy, but I'd rather blindside back in somewhere than mm -hmm. back in on the good side. I don't know why. It just happens that I do a lot better blindsiding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I don't, and I get out no matter what. It doesn't matter. Yep. Good side, sure. bad side. I, I always get out. I would never hit something i'd rather get out 10 times and look like a fool sure. yep. looking than hit something well well the funny part is those 10 times you'll never look like a fool it's that one time when you hit something <laughs> you are a fool yeah. yeah and i i mean i watch guys they they never get out that yeah. i shouldn't say guys drivers Driver, it doesn't yes. matter lady man whatever mm -hmm. um they they never get out they just mm -hmm. Back up till they hit something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, how many have you had any crashes? Um, yes. Yes, I've had um one, two, two or three. Mm -hmm. And were you involved or were they your fault? One one of them was my fault. Oh. I'm a little bit surprised to hear that, but yeah. Well, yeah. but I was going to say over a 40 year career, that's pretty yes. damn good. Yeah. And the, the one time was I, I was doing the roll off stuff and dropped the roll off down under a bridge and came up and I was on an incline. I looked both ways and then I started going and I was on such an incline that the car got in front of the truck and mm. I never seen it. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, mm pushing the car <laughs> <laughs> that happened another time but that the second one wasn't my fault <laughs> yep cool no that's yeah. that is an extremely good to be mm -hmm. uh without swearing that's a really good safety record i think yeah the amount of miles <laughs> you've done yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Well, and I just go. So what, what, what are your thoughts on, on what you're seeing in the industry today compared to what it was 30 years ago, at least, you know, we won't say 40 because at that 40 mark, you were still learning as you're getting into it, whatnot, but you know, what, what's, what's life like today and, and not necessarily just for a woman, but even just from a driver's <laughs> perspective with regards to, you know, technology, what we're seeing out there, congestion and stuff like that. You know, if we compared um, today with 30 years ago. Yeah, congestion, it's, it is a lot busier, um, a lot more distracted drivers with technology. Um, even from a driver's 
side, the technology, you put it in drive, you step on the gas or diesel or fuel, and, and you're going. I mean, you got to kind of put your foot down and pay attention. And you see a lot of guys drive by. And I don't know, maybe it's comfortable that way in those trucks to have your foot up and driving. But I mean, I both my feet are on the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, that's where the pedals are. And if I need to make a, an evasive maneuver or something, I want my feet on the floor, you know? Yeah, so. you got to be able to react and not yes. be like yeah. trying to get your foot out of the window or yeah. or shut yeah. off your, your phone from watching a movie or something like that. Right. I mean, right. you got to be aware of your surroundings. And, and I find there's a lack of with drivers now. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just did a driver's meeting this past weekend. And one of the, ta the areas that we talked about was perception and reaction time, you know, and we mm -hmm. talked about how your brain, mm -hmm. it, it takes your brain half a second to perceive what's about to happen. And then it takes your body mm -hmm. another half second to react. And what's really interesting is if your feet are up on the dash, it's going to take <laughs> you a lot more than half a second to react now. You know, the, yeah. the, the half the half second reaction time is in the best conditions possible where your feet are flat on the floor or actually on the pedals already. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. It, it, and you're always looking ahead and, and mm -hmm. seeing what's going on and watching your mirrors and you go by guys, they got curtains in the window and I'm like, are you ashamed of driving that truck? I mean, yeah. take the curtain down and pay attention. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, you could drive whatever truck you want. You got to be able to see your mirrors. Yes. The, yeah. The, I just believe in many areas, the quality of driver today, I'm not sure it is what it used to be for okay. the majority of our drivers. Yeah, it's not. And, and unfortunately, I hit the 60 mark, so a lot of us older drivers are getting out of it and the rates this year is, is going to be bad. The rates have yes. come down quite a bit. Everybody's cutting rates and yeah, and things gone up. I mean, insurance, tires, maintenance, just having a person yeah. work on your truck is $150 an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, not to mention trying to pay yourself, you know, as an owner operator, you know, it's a matter mm -hmm. of, I still got to pay myself something to operate this piece of equipment. So yeah, 80 cents for, well, my truck is more than 80 cents a mile for fuel because mm -hmm. she only gets five and a half miles to a gallon, but right. um, you got that and 30 cents for insurance. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's just, basics that's mm -hmm. you need 10 cents a mile for maintenance and everything else and there's not much out left no. for for a driver or a payment right yeah no wow payment would be a different thing oh my god <laughs> at the price of trucks today yeah. whether it's yeah. used or new it just yeah. um, as you said everything has gone up and freight yeah. rates we are in a freight recession, I believe. Yes. You know, yes. Um, I don't know why it hasn't tipped our economies into a recession, but certainly freight rates suck at the moment, to be mm -hmm. fair. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. No, they, they do. They. I mean, I'm going to find out for the first time in May when I go out how bad it is. I mean, yep. that will determine whether I'm working or not. Yeah. Sure. Oh, big time. Big time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take my savings to sit behind the wheel because I like it. I mean, I have to have some kind of moral that you can't do mm -hmm. that. Well, and, and that makes business smart business sense, right? Because I think, unfortunately, we're seeing too many people that are going, well, I got to stay in it. It'll turn around. It'll turn around. Well, no, we can't work on that basis. We got to go. Am I making any money on it? Am I at least breaking even on this? Yeah, you got to break even, at least pay for your hard costs. Yeah. I mean. Well, and something for you. Yeah. You know, like yeah. there's got to be a decent wage, I think, for drivers. Um, or else how, you know, you mentioned the older age of drivers. 
how are we going to attract any new ones to the industry mm -hmm. if we don't compensate the existing ones fairly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, everybody gets raises. I mean, company guys, I mean, they're getting like 60 cents a mile now or better. I mean, add that to the cost that I just mentioned. Yep. 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 I mean, you freight should be at like 350 four bucks a mile yep 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 i i i'll tell a little tale here in the late 90s <laughs> early 2000s prior to me getting out of the industry um we our expenses were averaging us about a buck 80 to a buck 90 a mile for truck mm -hmm. trailer insurance fuel all that good stuff and um now this would be canadian dollars but still relevant uh, so about a dollar eighty to a dollar ninety in expenses, and our freight rates we were getting were over three dollars a mile, you know, for our our uh, open deck freight, and um, yeah. we thought we were doing pretty good back then. And uh, sadly, we're seeing that the cost of operating this truck is is pushing the three dollar a mile mark, and freight rates are under three dollars to two fifty on average. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite upside down compared to what it was thirty years ago. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm hearing from drivers right now. It's, it's a buck fifty. That some of this stuff is a buck fifty. I mean, mm -hmm. I go empty before I take some for dollar fifty. Yep. What are you doing? Yep. You yeah, know, yeah, because you're not helping the market any, are you? No, no, and you're saying, okay, I'll just do it this one time. No, they're gonna want that forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. As as we wrap this up, Teresa, what? Would you encourage somebody to join uh, and be, get their truck driver's license? Um, I probably, I probably hold off till after the election. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Election. Yep. I also do have to add that it, Shell Rotella is the one who like introduced me to all these podcasts and stuff. Oh, cool. Right. Cool. I, and I, I've won two shows with them. Oh, um, nice. I've been using their products since 1987 in this truck. Wow. That's so, awesome. That's an accolade to that alone, especially for the witches in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll link to a, um, another podcast episode that we did She's just a couple of months ago, eh, John? Yeah, where yep, yep. We had the we DT had from Rotella. Shell uh, yep. on talking about mm -hmm. uh, their products and, and everything. And damn, there's a lot to know about oil. But mm -hmm. uh, Shell <laughs> Rotella is a great, you know, promoter of, the, of our industry. And yes. uh, you said you might be going to a truck show or two? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to make their truck show. I have not signed up yet. So I have to make sure they have room for me. Um, it's in Dallas, um, May 30th. It's at the um, Speedway over Fort Worth. And then um, the other one I might think about is um, Rantoul, Illinois. So if somebody mm -hmm. makes it to the Dallas Shell Rotilla truck show, they can look mm -hmm. up the witch, right? The witch, yes. She'll be there. On our broom, no. <laughs> now, I, I, I had to pull it up because I, could, I couldn't help but not, so I pulled it up. So this truck is red with orange stripes? Yeah, that was a calendar truck in 85, yeah. I, I see that uh, it looks like it was in, uh, you, did you win at the Matt's truck show in 2018? Yeah. Yep, yeah. so cool. This is a gorgeous truck. It's a gorgeous truck, and uh, you've got some uh, airbrushing across the back of this truck and whatnot. This look good looking truck here, trailer and whatnot. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. That trailer, that's what I'm work. Well, no, 2018. No, that one's my other trailer, but this one's similar. Um, yep. it's an East, and that's what I'm polishing. I do the okay. rails and the cross members. So cool. That's my task. That's that's a lot of work. I'd rather be a yeah. truck driver. Yeah, I love <laughs> I, 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 lo I love the tag she's got on on here. It says my broom is broken, so I have to drive this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on the back of the tarp it says, "Watch what you wish for." 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa oh, wow. DeSantis, thank you so much for coming on the Trucking Risk and Insurance podcast. I'll put links yes. to um, yep. your pictures down below. So for those <laughs> who want to see what the truck looks like, uh, click on the links down below. And Johnny's saying it's a gorgeous truck. Say it yes. one more time. Yes. Gorgeous truck. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's one of those trucks that I can understand why you keep driving it because it's probably just it, it it people just probably compliment you left right and center every time they see this thing well and I appreciate it because I put a lot of work into it I bet I bet so well and especially basically being in, in, in itself she's almost 40 years old alone so that's that's a huge accolade for you maintaining it and keeping it up well thank you thank you we appreciate that yep and thanks, Teresa, for coming on. And a huge shout out to Teresa DeSantis, a truck driver, owner, operator of 40 years of experience. Teresa, thanks so much for coming on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. All right, that's it for this week. Johnny and I, thank you so much. See you next week.